Growing up, it was like living in two different worlds under the same roof. My sister, Emma, was the star, shining bright with every step she took. Me? I was Lily, the other daughter, blending into the background so well you'd forget I was there. Emma, darling, how was school today? Mom would coo the moment Emma stepped through the door, her eyes sparkling with genuine interest. Killed it, as usual, Emma would reply, tossing her bag down with a confidence I could never muster. Got an A on the math test, and Mr. Jenkins said I'm a shoe-in for the lead in the school play. That's my girl. Dad would chime in, his pride swelling like a balloon ready to pop. Nothing but the best for my princess. I'd usually hover in the doorway, half hoping someone would ask about my day. But it was like I was invisible, a ghost in my own home. Hey, I'd mutter, more to myself than anyone else, knowing well enough not to expect much of a response. Uh huh, mom would occasionally throw my way, her attention never veering from Emma's glowing reports. Dinner times were no different. Conversations danced around Emma's achievements, future college plans, and dreams that seemed as reachable for her as the stars. I'd pick up my food, throwing in a comment here and there, only to be drowned out by the next exciting chapter of Emma's life. It wasn't like I didn't have my moments. I did well at school, not that anyone noticed. But it was Emma who had the spotlight, while I lingered in the shadows, applause echoing over to where I stood, silent and unseen. When Emma got her acceptance letter to a prestigious college, the house erupted. It was all they could talk about. Plans were made, budgets adjusted, all for Emma. I can't believe it. We need to start planning right away. There's so much to do. Mom was practically vibrating with excitement, her mind racing through a checklist of preparations. I knew she could do it. We'll support you every step of the way, Emma. Whatever you need, Dad declared, his chest puffed out with pride. Sitting at the edge of the living room, I couldn't help but wonder about my own future. High school was almost over for me too, but there were no college brochures with my name on them, no discussions about my dreams or aspirations. One evening, I gathered my courage, deciding to broach the subject. Hey, um, have you guys thought about what happens next for me? College, maybe? The room went quiet, the kind of silence that's heavy, loaded. Mom and Dad exchanged glances, a silent conversation passing between them before Mom finally spoke. Lily, you know we're stretched thin with Emma's college fund. Maybe you could take a gap year, find a job, save up some? Yeah, sis, college isn't for everyone, Emma added, her voice dripping with a condescension she probably didn't even realize. Besides, you're not exactly Ivy League material, are you? The word stung, a slap to my already bruised ego. But I swallowed the hurt, nodding as if I understood, as if it made all the sense in the world. Right, of course, I mumbled, my dreams, deflating like a balloon pricked with a needle. I'll figure something out. Leaving home wasn't just a choice, it felt like my only shot at proving I wasn't just the leftover daughter. So, I packed up my life into a couple of bags and moved into a cramped apartment with two girls I barely knew. The place was a far cry from comfortable, but it was a start. To keep the roof over my head and chase the college dream, I landed myself not one, but two jobs. My days began before sunrise and ended long after the moon had risen, each day blurring into the next in a relentless cycle of work and exhaustion. Yo, Lily, you sure you can handle both gigs? You're running yourself ragged, Jenna, one of my roommates, pointed out one evening as I collapsed onto our second-hand couch. Got no choice, do I? I shot back, trying to massage the day's toil out of my shoulders. It's this, or kiss college goodbye. You're one tough cookie, I'll give you that. Sarah, the other roommate, chimed in, tossing me a sympathetic look. Just don't burn out, alright? We kinda like having you around. Their concern was a bomb to the raw edges of my determination. I'll be fine. Just gotta keep at it, I replied, though deep down, the relentless pace was starting to take its toll. And then, as if life decided I hadn't had enough kicks, it threw me a curveball that would knock me flat on my back, literally. I got sick, 
the kind of sick that laughs in the face of your plans and drains your bank account without a second thought. My savings, every penny I had scrimped and saved for college, vanished like smoke, eaten up by medical bills that my joke of an insurance wouldn't cover. I remember sitting in that cold, sterile hospital room, the numbers on the bill making my head spin. This can't be right, I muttered to myself, hoping it was all just a big mistake. But no, the numbers didn't lie. And neither did the empty pit in my stomach when I realized all the money I'd saved for college was about to be swallowed whole by this disaster. I was out of the hospital, but not out of the woods. No job, no savings, and a body still too weak to even think about working the way I used to. Desperation led me to the one place I vowed I wouldn't go back to, home. Mom, Dad, I. I need a place to stay, just for a little while. Until I get back on my feet, I said, standing at the doorstep, feeling smaller than ever. The door was barely open a crack, my parents' faces peeking out, their expressions tight. Lily, now's not a good time, Mom said, her voice laced with something like regret, or maybe it was just inconvenience. Yeah, with Emma's wedding and all, we're really stretched thin as it is, Dad added, not meeting my eyes. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Stretched thin? I'm not asking for money, just a roof. Aren't I your daughter too? It's just. Emma's going to move back in after the wedding. Her and Mark need the space. You understand, right? Mom's attempt at sympathy felt like a slap in the face. Understand? No, I don't understand. I snapped, anger boiling over. You've always made room for Emma, always. And here I am, asking for once in my life, and you're telling me there's no space for me? Lily, please, this isn't easy for us either. Dad said, but it was too little too late. Save it. I get it. I've always been the second choice, the backup plan. Well, guess what? I don't need you. Never did. I spat, the words bitter on my tongue. Turning away, I felt the final thread connecting me to this so-called family snap. I was alone, truly alone, but I was determined not to let this be the end of my story. Damn them. Damn all of them. I'd whisper into the darkness, a promise to myself more than anything. I'd get through this, on my own terms. And when I did, I wouldn't look back. After my family turned their backs on me, I hit rock bottom. No cash, no place to crash, nothing. In a moment of sheer desperation, I dialed Aunt June, Mom's sister. Unlike Mom and Dad, Aunt June had always been the straight shooter of the family, never one to mince her words. Hey, Aunt June, it's Lily. I'm kinda in a bind, I said, trying to keep my voice steady. Lily? What's wrong, kiddo? Her voice was laced with concern, a stark contrast to the cold reception I'd gotten from my parents. I spilled everything, from the illness that drained my savings to being turned away by my own folks. There was a heavy pause on the line, before she finally spoke up. Pack your bags. You're staying with me she said, no room for argument in her tone. I couldn't believe it. Relief washed over me in an instant. Thank you, Aunt June. I, I don't know what to say. Don't say anything. Just get here, she replied, and that was that. Staying with Aunt June was like breathing fresh air after being underwater for too long. Her home was modest but warm, filled with the kind of love and acceptance I'd craved for years. Two weeks into my stay, we sat down at her kitchen table, a pot of her infamous strong coffee between us. Lily, what do you want to do with your life? Really do? She asked, her gaze piercing. I hesitated, not used to being asked about my dreams. I, I've always wanted to be a lawyer. I admitted, almost whispering. Aunt June leaned back, considering my words. A lawyer, huh? That's no easy path. You willing to work for it? More than anything, I replied, feeling a spark of hope ignite within me. All right then. I'll support you, pay for your college. But I've got one condition, she said, her tone serious. Anything, I said, eager. You study hard. 
No slacking, no excuses. You aim for the top, understand? I'm not funding a half-hearted attempt. She laid down her terms, clear as crystal. A grin spread across my face, the first genuine smile in what felt like ages. You got it, Aunt June. I won't let you down. And just like that, my life took a new direction. I enrolled in college, a fact I kept from the rest of my family. The days were long, classes during the day, studying into the night, and helping Aunt June around the house, whenever I could. But for the first time in a long time, I felt like I was on the right path. Remember, Lily, hard work's the key. You keep at it, and there's nothing you can't achieve, Aunt June would remind me, her belief in me a constant source of strength. Thanks, Aunt June. I won't forget, I would promise, holding on to her words like a lifeline. Aunt June's support was my rock, her home my sanctuary. And as I buried myself in my studies, I knew I was building a future, a future where I stood tall, no longer overshadowed or forgotten. A future where I'd make not just Aunt June, but myself proud. Life at college was a mix of hitting the books hard and the occasional release at parties with my classmates. I was pulling double duty, ASL in my studies, and working as a lawyer's assistant. The job didn't make me rich, but it paid enough to cover my needs. Aunt June's place felt more like home every day, and we got real close, like mother and daughter close. One night, out of the blue, she told me, Lily, I always wished for a kid like you. That hit me deep, made me realize how much I'd come to mean to her. My crew from college was solid. We'd hit parties when we could, just letting off steam and trying to remember we were still young and alive amidst the chaos of law school. But one night, I got home way later than I planned. Aunt June was up, sitting in the dim light of the living room, looking like she had the weight of the world on her shoulders. As I stumbled in, trying to be quiet but failing miserably, she looked up, her face stern, but worried. Lily, we need to talk she said, her voice cutting through the late-night fog in my brain. Sure, Aunt June, what's up? I replied, trying to sound sober and probably failing. It's about your priorities, kiddo. You've been going to these parties a lot. I see how hard you're working, but I'm worried you're losing sight of why you're here. She laid it out straight, no sugarcoating. I felt a lump in my throat. She was right. I'm sorry, Aunt June. You're right. I've been messing up. It won't happen again, I promise. My studies and the job, they're my priority. I lost track of that. Aunt June's expression softened. I know you're young and need to have fun, but you've got a rare chance here, Lily. Don't waste it. I believe in you, always have. Just, make sure you're not spreading yourself too thin, alright? Thanks, Aunt June. I needed to hear that. No more parties for me. It's time to buckle down even harder, I said, feeling a renewed sense of purpose. From that day on, I cut out the distractions. I dived deeper into my studies and work, determined to make Aunt June proud and to not let myself down. The parties and late nights gave way to early mornings in the library and long hours at the law office. It wasn't easy, balancing it all, but knowing I had Aunt June's support and believing in the path I'd chosen kept me going. My classmates noticed the shift. Lily's gone all in, huh? Barely see her out anymore, they'd say. But I knew I was making the right call. The goal wasn't just to get through law school, it was to excel, to build a future I could be proud of. Seven years zipped by faster than I ever thought possible. There I was, standing on the graduation stage at 27, with my name being called out for excellence. In that sea of faces, there was one that stood out, glowing with a mix of happiness and pride, Aunt June. She was the only family I had there, the only one I needed. Her support had been unwavering, her faith in me unshakable. As I walked across the stage to receive my accolades, I caught her eye and saw a tear roll down her cheek. It was a moment I'd never forget. This is for us, Aunt June, I whispered under my breath, my heart full. After graduation, I landed a job at a prestigious law firm. It felt like a dream. 
All those years of grinding, studying, and working had paid off. I was making a name for myself, proving I wasn't just the overlooked second child. One evening, Aunt June and I sat down for one of our heart-to-hearts. She had a way of turning any conversation into a deep reflection on life. You've done so well for yourself, Lily. I always knew you had it in you, she said, her voice warm but tired. Thanks to you, Aunt June. You believed in me when no one else did, I replied, feeling a mix of gratitude and concern for her evident fatigue. That's when she dropped the news about Emma. Your sister, well, she didn't finish college got pregnant and married her classmate. They're living with your folks now, all cozy with their three kids. I hope they're happy, was all I could muster, but inside, I couldn't help but wonder about the what-ifs. Our conversation was cut short when Aunt June's illness became apparent. It came out of nowhere, hitting us like a freight train. Before I knew it, she was gone. The woman who had been my rock, my family, left me in a world that suddenly seemed too big and too empty. In her will, Aunt June left me her house. It was a beautiful gesture, but it paled in comparison to the loss of her presence. I moved in, surrounded by memories of our time together, each room a testament to her love and belief in me. Alone in that house, I realized how much Aunt June had shaped my life. She had given me more than a roof over my head, she had given me the strength to chase my dreams, to rise from the ashes of my past. Several months after Aunt June's passing, life threw me another curveball. My family, who hadn't bothered with me in years, suddenly decided to show up on my doorstep. The reason? The inheritance Aunt June left me. The moment they walked in, Emma started eyeing the place like a hawk scoping out its next meal talking about moving in with her husband and kids as if I wasn't even there. This kitchen's perfect for the kids' breakfast. And look at that backyard. They'll love it, Emma said, parading around like she owned the place. Stunned by her nerve, I tried to interject. Hold on, this is my house. You can't just decide to move in. That's when my parents chimed in, echoing Emma's sentiment, with a logic that was lost on me. Lily, you're all by yourself here. Emma needs the space more than you do. It's only fair, my mom argued, as if fairness had ever been a priority in our family. The gall of their request hit me like a punch to the gut. Memories of being turned away when I was at my lowest flooded back. Fair? You call this fair? I shot back, my voice rising. Where was this family fairness when I was sick and needed a place to stay? You turned me away, remember? And now you want my house? They brushed off my words like they were nothing, continuing their tour of the house as if I hadn't spoken. Emma and her husband whispered to each other about where they'd place their furniture, while my parents debated which rooms would be best for the kids. I couldn't believe the audacity. You're not listening to me. This house is mine, left to me by Aunt June, not you. You made it clear years ago, we're hardly family when you shut me out. You can't just waltz back into my life and demand I hand over everything. But it was like talking to a wall. Their arrogance was impenetrable, their entitlement to my life's refuge, baffling. Look at this room, it'll be perfect for the baby, Emma said, blatantly ignoring my protests. That was the last straw. Enough, get out of my house, now. I demanded, my patience completely shattered. They hesitated, taken aback by my firm stance. Finally, my dad muttered, let's go, hurting Emma and her family out the door, but not without parting shots of calling me selfish and greedy. As I slammed the door behind them, a mix of relief and anger washed over me. The audacity of their visit was astounding. But in that moment, I also felt a deep sense of pride. Aunt June's house was a symbol of the strength and independence I had fought so hard to achieve. I wasn't about to let anyone take that away from me, family or not. After a long day filled with back-to-back -back cases at the law firm, I was looking forward to the quiet comfort of my home. However, as I approached the front door, my key refused to turn in the lock. Confusion turned to disbelief when I realized the locks had been changed. 
Knocking hard, I barely had time to process the situation when the door swung open. There stood my sister, Emma, flanked by her husband and their children, an air of defiance about her. We've decided to move in. It's better for the kids, and there's plenty of space, Emma stated matter-of-factly, as if it was the most natural decision in the world. I stared at them, a mix of anger and shock coursing through me. This is my house. You can't just decide to move in and change the locks without my permission. I'll call the police if I have to. Emma scoffed, her husband smirking by her side. Go ahead. They won't do anything. We're family. But I wasn't bluffing. I dialed the police, my fingers trembling with a cocktail of emotions. Before long, my parents arrived, turning the situation into a full-blown family confrontation. Voices rose, tensions flared, and amidst the chaos, Emma's husband made a veiled threat towards me. I didn't hesitate. I pulled out my phone and started recording, capturing his words and the ensuing uproar. He lunged for my phone, but I dodged, holding my ground. The arrival of the police cut through the noise. I explained the situation, showing them the deed to the house in my name and the video of the threats made against me. My mother, tears streaming down her face, tried to appeal to the officers. Please, she's our daughter. This is just a misunderstanding among family. But I stood firm, the weight of my aunt's legacy and my own hard-won independence anchoring me. They broke into my home and tried to force me out. That's not a misunderstanding. It's a crime. The officers nodded, their presence, bringing a semblance of order to the chaos. After a tense discussion, it was clear the law was on my side. My family, realizing the seriousness of their actions, reluctantly left my property. The moment they were gone, I exhaled a breath I didn't realize I'd been holding. The police advised me to change the locks again and consider a restraining order if the harassment continued. I called a locksmith immediately, ensuring this breach of my sanctuary would never happen again. After all that drama with my family trying to barge into my life and take over my house, things got pretty loud for a while. My sister, Emma, went around telling everyone who'd listen about how I'd supposedly turned cold and heartless. She even took to social media, posting pictures of her kids with these sappy captions about wanting a big house to live in trying to make me out to be the villain in her little sob story. But you know what? I couldn't care less. I saw those posts, sure. Scrolled right past them. I was done playing their games, letting them make me feel small. I cut off communication with them entirely. It was like shedding a weight I didn't even know I was carrying. Then, in the middle of sorting out my life and figuring out my next steps, I met someone. His name's Mike, and he's about as straightforward and genuine as they come. We bumped into each other at a local coffee shop, of all places. I was trying to balance my laptop and a cup of too hot coffee, and he just swooped in, saving the day before I made a complete mess. Whoa, careful there! He laughed, steadying my laptop with one hand while helping me sit down with the other. Thanks, I said, feeling a bit flustered, but grateful. I'm usually not this clumsy. I don't know, seems like you were about to give that laptop a coffee bath. I'm Mike, by the way. He introduced himself with an easy smile. I'm Lily, I replied, and something about the way he looked at me made me feel like maybe, just maybe, things were starting to look up. Mike and I hit it off pretty quickly. He had this way of making me laugh, really laugh, in a way I hadn't in a long time. Before I knew it, we were seeing each other almost every day. He'd come over, and we'd talk about everything and nothing until the early hours of the morning. It was easy, comfortable, and exactly what I needed. It wasn't long after that Mike moved in. It felt right, like he was meant to be there all along. Together, we turned my house into a home, filled with love, laughter, and an unspoken understanding that no matter what came our way, we'd face it together. And to anyone who's still listening to Emma's stories and feeling sorry for her? Well, they don't know the half of it. I've learned that some battles aren't worth fighting, and the only approval I need is my own. This is my life, my new beginning, and I wouldn't have it any other way.